Filipino giving me suits, gangsters. Bronze Capo, respectfully checking in. Discretion TV family, New Nation TV, we here now. So shout out to Blessing Still Breathing IG, back on IG for the alley-oop. They have pointed out that there's another body double. So not only is this a body double here where Pac is waving to the infamous wave to the body double. Let's run it back. I wanted to go live about this untalked about body double along with the question is how many body doubles and look-alike pox were there? You understand? We talked about this body double here often. The guy dressed like Pac in the same orange shirt and Pac waves to him. We always talk about 21 Gun Salute to everybody that supported the live shows also. We always talk about this dude right here that's dressed like Pac. 21 Gun Salute. Hold on. It's coming up. This dude right here. Let me try to freeze it on count. Yes, there is Vegas error. I forgot I had to freeze the shit. So again, I'm not the one that discovered this other body double. I didn't discover this dude right here that's dressed like Pac, right? Discretion TV will not take credit for this dude that's dressed like Pac. And there's a Pac coming over here, right? So there's two different packs, and I'm not taking credit for none of this shit. All I did was ask questions and why Pac waved at the motherfucker. Right? So we passed that. We passed that. Now we're talking about the alley-oop that I was given and I had to dig deeper in the alley-oop because I got tired of all these body doubles popping up. <laughs> 21 Gun Salute. So Pac is leaving the fight. We all know the infamous fight. We pointed out in live stream shows how Pac was waving off these dudes with the book bag We spoke about that during the live shows. 21 Gun Salute again for everybody that supported the live shows. I'll probably go live about this situation also. This new body double spotted. So I'm playing this so y'all can see they are leaving the MGM. So this body double or this maybe is Pac. <laughs> right? This person... He's walking by Orlando. I can't make this shit up. So I had to dig deeper. Like, all right, after he passed Orlando, where did he go? Because he looked at Orlando. Where did he go? The nigga was still... Like, I just need people to drop comments below, man. Because after this, there should be no question the intelligence of this movement, this operation that went down. There should be no question the intelligence of death row. You don't have people dressed up and look like you for no reason. You understand? We all talked about the book bag people in Pac waving them niggas off. Tell them, let me run that back. Let 
That's crazy. The dude's in the book bag. Pac waved them off. Went back one more time. 21 gun salute. You could call this mainly a damn near recap. Pac waving the dudes off. Play it back one more time. We talked about the film production crew and these dudes with the book bag. Here you go, the dude with the book bag. Play it one more time. So basically you can see Pac waving a dude off with the book bag and his fucking camera crew, production crew, 21 gun salute. So now, I just want y'all to see they're leaving the MGM. And this is in sequence, and I didn't cut it, I didn't edit this. And especially, where did this other body double do go? You understand? That's what we're here to talk about. Again, I might be going live on this topic Because this is crazy. So everybody leaves the MGM. I, I just need people to see that during this video that people are leaving. They left. This is sequence we see for years. This is the timestamp. Twenty one gun salute. Because I had to run it back to make sense out of this. So now this is where the infamous Orlando Anderson scene, as we all know. Hold on, let me, 21 Gun Salute, let me slow this down. Thanks again to whoever gave me that alley-oop how to slow these shits down. Because these shits be going so fucking fast. There you go, 21 Gun Salute, we are gonna slow this shit down. Because here goes the other body double. In a few seconds, he's going to be walking. He's going to be walking in this crowd. So you got, remember I said this might have been Tim Brandon. This is right during that part of the video, 21 Gun Salute. So remember, everybody left the MGM. There should not be nobody looking like Pac up in this fucking crowd. Orlando is over here in this era, in this area. Twenty one gun salute. So Orlando's right here. This is where Orlando's at. And here we go. The lookalike Pac. The nigga is walking in a blazer. When this this one is back. Twenty one gun salute. Another fucking body double. Here you go again. The look like pot. Let's run this back. Again, shout out to Blessing Still Breathing the IG for the alley oop. The look of like Pac. Let's run this back. I can't make this shit up. So, after the alley oop, I had to say, nah, where did this motherfucker go? 
He's going to pop out right there. Boom. And he's looking. He's looking over at Orlando. Now, again, this is something that was already in these videos for years. And I asked myself, where did the nigga go? Let's run this back before I get to that part real quick. 21 Gun Salute. New Nation TV. Discretion TV. The nigga looks like Pac. He's walking. There you go. Let me see if I can catch a still shot. I'm trying to catch him as soon as I see him. Booyah, got him. Yo, bro. What is this nigga doing? Is this pot? Yo, bro, there's no fucking way, B. Discussion TV family. There's no fucking way. You understand that there's another body double or is this Pac dressed like he's in gang related? There's no fucking way. What is he walking with the security? Let's run this shit back. Again, I might have to go live about this. Or I, if you see this video... I probably went live already, 21 Gun Salute. Uh, Valentino giving me Come on, somebody. Capo status. Discretion TV style. Now, I just went live, and I talked about Idi Amin's statement to the green jury. And it was zapped. Respectfully. Disrespectfully. <laughs> now... In Idi Amin's grand jury statement, the DA asked him, was that the last time you seen Mr. Shakur? I kept telling y'all, they thought Pac was alive and Pac faked his death. Why would they ask Idi Amin, was that the last time you seen Mr. Shakur? After the UMC questions. You know, reading these statements in this grand jury script, transcript, etc., you know, I was saying, why did Edie have to answer all these questions? Why didn't he plead a fifth? A lot of them is like dry snitching. The DA asks Edie, I mean, Malcolm Greenwich. Did you ever see Pac in the hospital bed? You know, they kept on giving details like they felt Pac Pull the fast one. I'm just saying, drop comments below respectfully. When you dig deeper in these statements by Edi Amin and the DA, I'm going to play an interview on Officer Vlad. When Edi Amin was on Officer Vlad, and you know, basically, even when Pac was telling them to lay down, this here in the statement. Pac was telling Edi Amin and the outlaws they're going to shoot y'all, I mean, and the police, stay down, lay down. How many times did Pac take his last breath? You know, people come to my channel and they cap. But these DAs are sneaking in questions like this. What you want us to do? Like, really, really broke up. You know, if I was fucked up, you know, the whole the whole theory of of Suge setting Pac up and so forth. No one who I talked to that's close to the situation has ever agreed with that theory. Nah. I always thought it was a stupid theory. It's a dumb theory. They come up with new theories every fucking day. You listen to the theories, you know, Pac somewhere, you know, we know where he at, you know, all this, you know, Samantha. these people. These people run with something new every fucking day when it's, come on, when it's involving Tupac, man. We, you know what I mean? What, what, what did you think when you first saw Pac in the hospital? Um, I was devastated, you know? 
You know, first and foremost, me and Napoleon was, you know, went out there. We, you know, brought a couple heaters with us. You know what I mean? And so that's Young Noble talking about. They brought a couple of heaters with them out in Vegas. I mean, some would say a little too late, Noble. It was. It was like we didn't know what the hell we was on our way to. You know what I'm saying? But um. It was it was a fucked up situation, you know what I mean? I just remember him um, having a lot of. It was like he was on the table, but it was like he just wanted to scream and just say some shit. It was like he still had all this energy. You like, you know, trying to talk to him like just, you know what I mean? It was it was it was nuts, man. So according to Noble, Pac had all this energy. He was screaming, trying to tell him something. Pac fans keep asking y'all, when did Pac take his last breath? Yeah, you know, I was just praying my big bro make it out of that shit, you know what I mean? And you guys were all, like, on patrol at this point? Yeah, definitely, you know? We didn't know what the hell was going on. You know, people was calling the hospital and, you know, saying they're going to finish the job and motherfuckers, you know, all these people ride by the hospital, all, you know what I mean? You didn't know what was going on, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy, but, you know... They definitely, motherfuckers is calling up there, definitely making threats and shit like that. So, you know, we was up there on point for sure. Did you hear any of these threats yourself or people were telling no, you about it was, these? No, it was telling us. Like, yo, they just called up here and, you know, this is, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, people gonna call the hospital and give you a warning that they're gonna come finish the job. But, you know, that's what's happening. So at the time, you know, we don't know what the fuck going on. Who knows? People are, people are retarded. People... You know, who knows, somebody might actually try to come up here and do some shit. Who the fuck knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, how long after the shooting did he actually pass? Six days. Six he was days. at the hospital for about six days, man. No sleep, on patrol, 24-7, man. So you didn't go to sleep at all? Probably not. Not really. Nope. How can you sleep? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not really it's a sleep-inducing situation. All right. Well, when, when, you, when you finally got the news that they're... That he passed. So how did you guys feel? Like, you know, devastated. Like, you know, how when you lose anybody you love, you know what I mean? You know, especially a dude like that who, you know, who who future was was as bright as the sun. You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. I, I was, you know, what I mean, I didn't like, I didn't like seeing him in that in that in that situation in in that bed in that hospital. So, you know, if he had to go, I wanted, you know, I wanted him to be able to go and be free of, of where he pain. was at. The pain, not being able to be him, you know what I'm saying? I, I took some relief in that. In a weird kind of way, I was happy he was able, because that's somebody I love. Right. So I was happy he didn't have to suffer no more because that was suffering, that ain't living, you know what I mean? So if he's not going to be 100%, then I'd rather him be free and not, you know, have to deal with this world and this bullshit. Yeah, like them surgeries, and they were talking about he was, they was gonna have to remove a lung and all this shit. Yeah, I mean, I remember when it happened, and, I, and I'm living in the Bay Area. Everybody just thought that he was gonna pull through. Like Superman, right? And, and it even, I'm, I don't remember when DJ said this, and I'm sure they're regretting this to this day but like DJs were even kind of cracking jokes like oh well how are we gonna rap with one lung cause you know n not to clown Pac but just everyone just assumed well he got shot before right he gonna, he gonna make it through and again that's another reason why I was happy he was free because he had suffered enough you know what I mean like it wasn't no walking apart for this man this man had a hard life from day one you know what I mean even the way he came into this world so, yeah, go ahead, be free. Let 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 the world miss you. They don't deserve you right. if this is gonna keep happening to you. Even though he's not out of the you know realm of responsibility for his own actions, he, you know what I'm saying. But at this point, that's what I was saying earlier. Like it's it's so crazy. Like you know that he's not here. You know we got a song called "Everybody Love You When You Go." on our new mixtape that's about to come out. And it's, it's, it's just a reflection of that. Like, you know, when that man was here, it was, it was, it was crazy. You, you know what I mean? When you say that, that Pac had a, you know, 
had a responsibility for his own actions. When, when, you, when, you, look at, when you look at that, that situation, and if you connect the fight at the MGM to the shooting that happened right afterwards, you could say that Tupac died gangbanging because that situation with Orlando was a, as a gang situation. And Pac wasn't a blood, wasn't, you know what I mean? He, he, was, he was rolling with Suge and he was associated with saying, it. You see what I'm saying? You got, that's like us. We're not Crips or Bloods, but we could, you know, we could call 50 niggas up here and half of them be Crips, half of them be Bloods. You know what I'm saying? And these is all my homies that I'm a ride with. You know what I'm saying? It was the, it's the same situation. You know what I mean? Pac was riding with him, you know what I mean? Just like they was riding with him, you know what I mean? If some 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 shit kicked off, niggas would have been, been the first to ride for Pac. And he was the same way. He was riding with his homies, whoever it was. It, it could have He could have been with, you know, whoever that day. You know what I'm saying? And, and to break it down uh, even more simpler, me and you become good homies, and you get into a situation, and I defend you as a homie. Yeah. Take the gangbanger shit away. Yeah. Because me, you not a gangbanger, I'm not a gangbanger. You know what I'm saying? But you own Vlad TV. You and know they what I'm saying? And the niggas is on your you. heels and I ride for you. Yeah. Did I die for Vlad TV? You know what I mean? Did I die a reporter? <laughs> Did I die, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah, a no, journalist? I you know what I'm saying? But I, I guess the only difference is, you know, for example, you, you compare it to the Jay Prince situation. Jay Prince ain't the one that's going to be coming in and beating people up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Pac took it upon himself to do it himself as opposed to letting a security Pac dude... To, Pac was a 25-year-old dude who was a fucking megastar and had the world. Pac didn't make all the right decisions, you know? Pac used to do a lot of he shit. He does that 25. You know, you Pac know used I mean? to do a lot of shit he shouldn't have fucking did, you know? He, he wasn't perfect. He was a human being, you know what I mean? And he would have been the first to tell you, like, yo, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get better, you know what I mean? And he was... You know, granted, he would have lived a little longer. He would have man. And, and when I get a chance to, I, I go out and talk to the youth and talk to the kids, you know what I mean? And um, what I warn them about, especially the kids that really love Pac, is heroism and not, get, not getting caught up in that because you got to be able to judge and appreciate somebody 360 degrees and see everything, you know what I mean? If you really... You know, if you're really influenced by somebody, you got to be influenced by the good and the bad, the dark and the light, and take it all in. Don't just take the good and just put this man on a pedestal to where, right. you know, you don't see where he made mistakes because he would want you to learn from his mistakes. A lot of he people wanted do us that. to learn from his mistakes. A lot of people do that with Pac, you know. Yeah. They, it's like, come on, he wasn't perfect. He made some, some stupid-ass, dumb fucking decisions, man. You know what I mean? While Pac's in the hospital, how's the Feeney taking this? She was the calmest one. Really? She, she was, was the, the calmest rock. one. Period. You know what I mean? She was the steady hand. You know what I mean? Like, Snoop cried in her lap. You know what I mean? She had right. to console Snoop. You know what I mean? All of us, really. All I'm, of us. I'm going to be you know honest I mean? with you. Like, watching her kind of made me even man up more. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you saying this is his mom, and she's yeah, the, that's, that's the her calmest son. one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's her son, and that's... The son that transformed her life and her whole family's life. She was life. a rock. Yeah, I mean, he, but he that's, the, lying, that's her only son. You know what I mean? That's her only son. And she was, like he said, she was the rock. You know what I mean? She was the rock. And even after he was gone, she continued to be that rock and be a symbol of, you know, how to strength. handle yourself, a symbol of strength. You know what I mean? What a soldier really is. In the, you know in, I mean? the in the midst of the storm being calm like she done taught me that over the years like you know after that Gaddafi died you know we just lost fatal last year it's like you know what i mean we've been going through a lot of shit over these years that motherfuckers don't know about and you know watching her and that whole little time period you know taught me a lot how to um how to how to be calm in the midst of the goddamn storm because you can make a lot of wrong decisions that you can't get back you know what i mean so so Pac passes and, and a gang war breaks out in Compton. Yeah. Were you guys aware of this happening? Left his house in Calabasas, and um, I called back. Nobu, young Nobu was there. Mm -hmm. When I called the house, I said, No, what's up? I think I was having some company come. 
and Noah was like, Pac just called you. Mm -hmm. I said, what did he want? He said, he, he's, all he said is, where's Moo? Mm -hmm. Tell him that I just knocked this dude out. Mm -hmm. Wallahi, it's strange, because even, even Edie, Cash on Gaddafi said, the first person Pac said to call after he fought the guy mm -hmm. is me. 21 Good Salute. Now, I already played Young Noble's part. Let's see if we could get some more narrative on Young Noble. We fall in line. You fall in line. Did he tell you what just happened? Yeah. What, yeah. what did he tell you? Just got into it. Somebody had to whoop somebody's ass. He even, he even called us at the mansion when he got to the hotel. Like, get on the phone. He going crazy. Put on the speakerphone. Me and Napoleon listening. He like, yo, we just got... And that's where the red flag comes in because according to old Yuckmouth Noble, goat my motherfucker, <laughs> he said he had a speakerphone listening to Pac with Napoleon in front of him. Is that... A red flag or not? 21 he, even, he even called us at the mansion when he got to the hotel. Noble said he called us at the mansion. Just got into it. Somebody had to whoop somebody's ass. He even, he even called us at the mansion when he got to the hotel. Like, get on the phone, he going crazy, put on the speakerphone, me and Napoleon listening. He like, yo, we just got into it. We like he said, me and Napoleon listening. So, I don't get it. Why is Noble lying? For Napoleon, putting him in Pac's history, writing him in Pac's history that way, or I don't know why Napoleon is erasing himself out that part of the history. It's either or either. Somebody is recreating the history. Like, get on the phone, he going crazy, put on the speakerphone, me and Napoleon listening. He like, yo, we just got into it. We like, yo, y'all be safe out there. Calm down, man. You know what I mean? He had to call us and let let us know, you know, and just put some pause on somebody. You know what I mean? The, you know, all the extra excitement, the fight just had Mike Tyson, all this shit. The nigga was called us. He was, I heard the energy just coming through the damn phone, man. You know what I mean? If anybody could throw fluff and cap, it's definitely Noble. That's why his records never sell as a solo artist. 21 Girls Salute. See through that bullshit. Jeffrey's house in Calabasas, and um, I called back. Noble, young Noble was there. Mm -hmm. When I called the house, I said, Noble, what's up? I think I was having some company come. And Noble was like, Pop just called you. Mm -hmm. I said, what did he want? He said, he, he's, all he said is, where's Moo? Mm -hmm. Tell him that I just knocked this dude out. <laughs> Wallahi, it's strange because even even Edie, Cash on Gaddafi said the first person Pac said to call after he fought the guy mm -hmm. is me.